What's a piece of information you learned that feels illegal to know? Potassium chlorate is available online. Cheaply and in bulk. Combined with table sugar and a little bit of sulfuric acid, also available online or in a car's battery. It will explode and burn with a purple flame. Demo man has entered the chat. Ah that's the spirit. The You're allowed to rip the tag off your mattress. Lol yeah it's funny to me that people don't know this. They read, do not remove under penalty of law, but completely miss the, except by consumer, underneath it. Unless you're some kind of mattress middleman who buys them up to resell to end users. You can take the tag off your mattress and it's perfectly legal. Source. I work for a betting company and my job, supply chain, involves compliance QA. Greater than they read, do not remove under penalty of law, but completely miss the, except by consumer, underneath it. It's perfectly fine to remove the tag. You then have to consume the mattress. I had a dream one night that I was eating a giant marshmallow and when I woke up my mattress was gone. That's mighty impressive, considering you were sleeping in a hammock at the time. The chemical formula for nitroglycerin. Don't mix that up with your Gatorade. Could have explosive diarrhea, or a heart attack. It's used as a blood pressure medication. I was once helping to clear out some old belongings of a person who had passed away many years before. In those belongings were maps, notes, and other documents detailing intelligence plans and documenting foreign posts. I'm sure it's all well past being useful. But I did later learn the person was a well-respected expert in his obsolete field with three-letter agencies. Even found an envelope addressed to someone at the NSA. Containing nothing but commercial product manuals. Postmarked late 1960s. Even though the joke is, tastes like chicken. Humans actually taste like pork according to Cannibals E. G. Arthur Shawcross. Which made perfect sense to me when I found out. In med school we dissected cadavers including human muscle and fat. And xenografts tissue transplants from one animal to another are generally pig or cow E. G. Porcine heart valves are still used for heart surgery in humans. And apparently beginning tattoo artists use pigskin to learn on because structurally the skin and flesh is most similar to tattooing humans. Oh yeah in suturing workshops etc we always practice on pig hooves first. We took turns visiting the butchers to pick up a bag of hooves for a few dollars. In UK they are called trotters. That's odd in Australia we call them doctors. Suppose you were a member of a jury. If you were persuasive enough. You could convince your cohorts to render a verdict of, yeah. Well, the defendant totally did the thing that they're accused of having done. But they shouldn't get in trouble for it. On account of the law itself being stupid. That's a bit of a dramatized oversimplification. But jury nullification is a real thing. It isn't illegal to discuss. But as you can imagine, there are quite a few folks in the legal world who would really prefer that jurors not know about it. For one thing, the knowledge has led to a recent rise in acquittals for drug-related charges. But more important still is the fact that people who bring up the practice tend to be, and this is a technical legal term, annoying as all hell. TLDR, you can legally piss off judges and lawyers while freeing criminals. The first time I went for jury duty, we got a pamphlet and video that explained that jury nullification was our right and we should be judging the law as well as the evidence. That's far cry from my own experience. The last time that I went in for jury duty, the judge spent several minutes lecturing us about how it was absolutely not our place to question any laws. We were there, she said, to determine if the defendant was guilty of having broken said laws as they were already written, and that any other concerns had no place in the courtroom. Her exact words were, if you feel that a law needs changing, write to your representative, single quote, very state by state. Some states have it codified in law as a right of jurors. If you put a wet Jolly Rancher on a cold window and let it freeze then pull. The window will break. This sounds like something you learned by accident. Hey when I get my Jolly Ranchers stuck on my windows by accident. There's worse places they can end up. Let's hear your Jolly Rancher story. You know the one. The little, I, in a circle on YouTube ads is clickable and if it's an unskippable ad you just click it and click stop seeing this ad and you're back to your video. Fuck yeah it works now delete this before YouTube sees this and patch it. 
Do you guys live under a rock? Adblock has been a thing for years. How a nuclear bomb works. Apparently it's just a uranium bullet being fired at another piece of uranium. You have to fire them at each other really hard. If you try to just gently push them together. A small nuclear reaction will start that will heat the air enough to blast them back apart. But not a proper nuclear explosion. That's called a fizzle. You fire the uranium bullet with enough force it pushes through that reaction and causes an even more extreme reaction. That's the big boom. But not too hard otherwise the fission will blow the uranium apart before too much of it fizzes. So you have to put some metals in the way to slow things down. I learned about this on an episode of Sliders. That ducks at my park are free. The elites won't tell you this. I have 451 ducks right now. You should write a novel called Ferendic 451 chronicling the adventures of your duck army. I would have gone with Fallenheit but I award you full marks and precisely one, one up vote regardless. How to make a fertilizer bomb. FBI here cool. Disregard this man. He has a girl's name. I'm Taliban Sam. We want you for an exciting job opportunity in an exotic faraway land. We can negotiate your pay. But we have an excellent benefit package including full medical and dental. And 72 virgins if you convert and happen to die in a workplace accident. S. So basically at our school if there's an intruder we are supposed to lock the classroom doors and hide while the teachers stay on their computers waiting for the all clear code. No student is supposed to know the code because if so it could put us at risk of more problems if a lockdown was to occur. At school I was waiting in the hallway for the bell to ring when I looked through the window leading to the school receptionist office when I see this large book. It had the all clear code right on the front page. I thought schools was supposed to have reliable security. My extremely paranoid, unmedicated 16-year-old self is responsible for the entire evacuation plan for my former high school. Like it's codified. It's probably still on the books. When I got a job at a school. They didn't give me an ID tag for several days. The building had 48 exits. I was lost as hell and just wandered the halls and teachers nodded pleasantly to me as if I had always been there. I could have done anything. School security is mostly a farce emo. When I was in year 11 and 12, Australia, my school had a dress code. It was basically you can wear any clothes as long as they're black white, green, or gray. You also had a student ID card so teachers could come up at any time and say, hey, I don't believe you go to this school. Show me your ID. But if you were dressed in the colors, most teachers wouldn't bother. My boyfriend, who didn't go to the school, used to come hang out at lunch with me and my friends at lunch and knew what colors to wear so no one questioned his presence. When I was at school, UK, there was no it at all. The idea that someone would be there that didn't belong doesn't seem to have been a consideration. Although we were an all-boys school so they probably reduced the risk in the admin's eyes. That there is no federal law preventing a private citizen from owning a flamethrower. My family knows a guy who built one. You can probably build one on your own if you want. Get some gasoline, a lighter, and a super soaker. Boom. Literally. This would be a really, really bad flamethrower. It'd melt itself, for one, but more importantly they're based on a rubber bladder design that is almost guaranteed to react with the gasoline. But that's not even the worst. Gasoline is a very thin liquid and splits apart easily in air. No matter how high you crank the pressure, by the way it's capped at like 80 psi even if you glue the emergency valve shut. The gasoline will just spread into a fireball right in front of you. A proper flamethrower has a very viscous fuel. Think Vaseline and sticky like napalm, the idea is to shoot a stream of flaming goo at your enemies. Which is much scarier than a 5 meters fireball. You need a lot of pressure to force a liquid that thick through a nozzle. About 500 psi. But you get a stream that can go upwards of 100 meters. That's the kind of shit you could take to the hammock district. Hydrofluoric acid won't eat through plastic. It will, however, dissolve metal, rock, glass. Ceramic. Greater than Breaking Bad Season 1. If you have a VHS tape with copy protect on it, you can record it over onto Betamax then back to VHS to get rid of the copy protect. Social media tracks you to the point that it records every message you write and stores it in a database. 
Every call, message, voice message, image and posts are recorded. You are being monitored to the point that the computer even times the amount of time you spend looking at each post and the longer the time is on topic the more of those types of videos you get. Just to keep you engaged in the app and entertained. Over time the computer learns everything about you and knows you better than you know yourself edit, spelling, grammar. That doesn't seem illegal to know just that it should be illegal. It can only be illegal when you don't click, I agree, or, I consent, etc. Those cookies aren't there for show.